DraftKings best ball breakdown. We got Saints at Bucks. Uh, this is the final episode, episode 16. Let's do it. My name is Tyson Smith, joined by Ellie Hernandez. 16 shows in. Ellie, uh, this is our last show for the team breakdowns for best ball. We're doing these by week 17 matchups. Um, Saints and Bucks this time around. Uh, we're going to transition into DFS, main slate, um, showdown, obviously. And then we have a little bit of a marathon sprint to finish any drafts that we need to get done. But for this one, I don't know why this one ended up last. Um, no, no real reason. Um, but so, you know, this is kind of interesting. Like, I feel like, but look, this is a bad division. I feel like both of these teams have a chance to maybe win the division. Like, I think the Saints are the clear favorite in my opinion. But what are your thoughts on th this division as a whole? And what about each team? What are your expectations for each team? Seems like to me the Saints with Derek Carr. Uh, I think they're going to be above 500, especially in a shitty division, right? I think, this, yeah, I think the Saints uh, have a clear opportunity to win the uh, the NFC South this year. Um, I think uh, Atlanta's got all the youth, right? So they may be able to do something as well. Um, but uh, I, I don't know, man. It's it's going to be an interesting one. I think Tampa Bay is kind of in a, a weird spot. They could easily uh, be competitive in the division just because the rest of the division is so bad. Or, you know, if they only have two wins going into, like, the midway point, we could start seeing them maybe tank a little bit for Caleb Williams as well. So uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. But I think there's, like, you know, I, I have got a little exposure to, like, Kyle Trask because I think some of those scenarios are are definitely in play. But uh, I'm not expecting much. I'm, I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, Baker or Kyle – whomever or Derek Carr can, you know, do what we, what we need, James, what we did, had Jameis doing for both teams, right? That, that's all yeah, I right? want. Let's just have some fantasy production here. Let's look at injuries real quick here, and then we'll get into narratives, new players, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Injury-wise, Kendry Miller had like a little hamstring injury. Uh, he's the third round rookie that they brought in, and with obviously Alvin Kamara being suspended for three games, he was getting drafted a lot higher because, you know, you have like, Kendry Miller slash Jamal Williams as that number one guy. Is Jamal Williams still a number one, or is he a compliment to a guy like Kendry Miller to step in for Kamara? It's kind of up in the air um, as far as that goes, but it looks like Kendry Miller's fine. It looks like he'll he'll start the season. I don't know what, exactly what his role is going to be, but uh, he's, he's dropped in ADP quite a bit. And uh, as far as injuries for the Bucks. Um, I, oh, you know what? We do have to talk about a little bit about Taysom. I guess he had a little like oblique injury or or something like that, and you've seen his ADP go down quite a bit. Um, he seems like he's going to be fine, but there's no real injuries on the Buck side that I know of, as far you know, as far as position players that we would draft. Um, you know, you got always got Godwin to worry about. You always got Mike Evans to worry about as far as missing a game here, game there. But but to me, Godwin's kind of a guy that I always worry about. So, you know, thoughts just while we're do talking about injuries, what about thoughts on the age of some of these uh, Tampa Bay guys? And, you know, are you super comfortable taking these older pass catchers on a shitty team? Yeah, I mean, uh, if we're talking about uh, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, I, I'm I'm all for it. I know that the team is uh, struggling, but um, we'll talk about it a little more in narratives. I think there's, there's a possibility one or two of these guys could be even moved off, you know. Uh, maybe they ship them out somewhere to get some draft picks and blow it all up. But, uh, the, you know, New Orleans is interesting because uh, outside of the, um, you know, outside of the the question mark that comes with Kendra Miller, uh, you do have a lot of narratives with uh, Kareem Hunt, uh, right? He was supposed to sign there at one point. Yeah. And what's funny is that kind of hurt some of the ADP uh, for um, – well, Kendra Miller specifically and Jamal Williams. So for I, I, Kendra Miller, he hasn't even picked back up because of the, the little injury shit that's been going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamal Williams, he obviously picked back up. But like those are guys that I still think you can get a lot to. And um, if you were dropping a little earlier on, you could get them pretty cheap, to be honest. So uh, those are guys that uh, I think we'll continue to look at um, as we get closer to the season. Kamara's going to be out for three games, man. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I, I think you're going to get some value from these other two. So uh, Mike Evans did say, you know, sort of set a limit to his contract extension or renegotiation, whatever it is, 
Uh, he's in the final year of his contract. Uh, looks like it seems like the writing's on the wall of th- that this could be his last year, or they could trade him. You know, they like like you said. Um, so I, I think that this could be the last year we see Mike Evans with this team, which is fine because this is a rebuild sort of situation. They won their Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Tom Brady t- pieced out. Now they have Baker Mayfield that they brought in and Kyle Trask fighting for that position. Baker Mayfield won it. Um, so, you know, th- thoughts on the Baker Mayfield situation here. We saw him come in like he got in my opinion, he got a raw deal with the Browns. Like he took the Browns to the playoffs. It's a shitty situation. Is he, you know, an incredible quarterback? I don't think so, but I think he's a competent dude that should should get another chance to start. He came in off of what four days with the with the Rams. Yeah. Came in, started a game, looked okay, looked you know pretty damn good for a dude who's coming off the street, and won this job it, w- with the Bucks. What's your expectation for Baker Mayfield? Like there is a serious like scenario where he absolutely tanks, and we see Kyle Trask. But like I think that in my opinion, I think it's just a you know an average season. He he starts all the games and it's just an average season, and they have a losing season overall. So what's your expectation for that? I mean, I just I don't know how he went from you know a number one pick to uh, just wildly inaccurate. Right? I think there's got to be something more to it. Uh, I think having a little bit of time with the coaching staff, um, somebody who's actually giving you a shot, and I you know I think uh, I think he might find that with uh, like who's the, who's the coach? It's a uh, uh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, he used to be the quarterback, Byron Leftwich. Right? Byron Leftwich. Uh, or, well, he's he's the offensive coordinator. No, we got Dave. Uh, Can- Dave Canales is the new OC. Um, okay, they got rid of Leftwich. Yeah, he's a rookie uh, offensive coordinator. I think he was a quarterbacks coach. So there's some, you know, we don't know what his offense is going to look like. He's never designed one before. So it's, you know, who knows. <sighs> Yeah, man. Like again, I, I just think it's a, if if Baker is going to be the man there, and which they've announced that he is, he has the weapons. I mean, you got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Right? I don't know if he's ever really had that. Like he's had a you know decent running game around him, and they got Amari Cooper right for like the last year that he was there. But hey, the Browns is a shit show organization. So I I'm I mean, if he can win with four days in L.A., like I don't know, man. Like he can go out and get your team fired up. So I I actually don't have much expectations for Tampa. I just think they're going to be fun to watch. And I'm kind of rooting for him because, they, you know, Baker has nothing to lose. Like I know yeah. he's a douchebag, but like, you know, <laughs> figure it out, man. I, Whatever. I, I'm rooting for Baker. Um, You know, do I see some sort of pro bowl situation this year for him hell no but i'm rooting for him to be a competent starter and maybe he gets another chance i, I don't know what's going to happen with him uh when it comes to new orleans we've obviously got Derek carr moving over um that that's a that's a that's a big boost in my opinion um i think Carr is one of these guys who can absolutely crush uh, especially playing in the dome um you got chris olave who's damn good um, we know that I've been trying to get to a lot of him. So we got Chris Lobby. Then you got Mike Thomas coming back from injury. Will he play? <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to believe it until I see him playing in week one, whether or not he's going to be able to play at all. Uh, even though it seems like he's relatively healthy. So what are some narratives that are, that you're looking at here with new Orleans? Um, I don't think that, you know, we saw in the preseason some some guys play well. Like any anybody stick out to you here? Uh, thoughts on this running back situation? Just general narrative thoughts. Um, really, the only one that I'm interested in is what's going to happen with the running backs. Uh, I I thought it was a bit over overreaction. People just immediately thought that Kareem Hunt was signing there. I know that there was an announcement, but like until until a contract's been released, until they signs right, like intends to sign is just bullshit right so i started drafting when that happened man kendra miller st- uh, slipped a lot um and that's that's what i'm looking at alvin kamara is still out three games um I, like what is their fucking backup his name is like kirk Merritt. like i don't or yeah kirk Merritt is the four string running back like wh- what are they going to do with that that means it's going to be uh they they must trust jamal and they must trust uh uh Kendra Miller. So that's where I'm at with it, man. Like I want to see what they're doing. Hopefully they don't sign Kareem Hunt by the end of the or by the end of the week. Um, because I've been loading up on Kendra Miller with all this bullshit going on with him. All right, let's get to this breakdown. Break it down. All right, so um I have to mute this song like three seconds into it, or they'll throw a <laughs> something on the account. Um 
Chris Olave uh, going at pick 21. I He's been sticking around that way. And, and look, I don't mind reaching for him um, because I think he could have one hell of a season. So let's start with Olave here. And then we'll talk about some of these Bucks guys who are all kind of going very close to each other. Um, I mean, are you as high on Olave as I am? Yeah, I mean, I probably might be a little bit higher. Uh, I'm trying to look at my exposure to him right now, but uh, he's going to get involved in an offense. They're going to. What do they have? One game that's not a dome game, and it's because they have to play in Tampa, right? It's not like, it, and it's not going to be during hurricane season. It's going to be fucking December. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the perfect place to be playing. They're in the NFC South, all domes um alave was a monster last year i have no reason to expect he's going to be anything less than that uh, and i i think at this point you kind of built an offense around him now right it's no longer relying on is michael thomas coming back is he still the guy right if michael thomas comes back that's all cool but it's it's a lave show so i i think uh i think he's a great pick the fact that he's been consistently where he is is kind of interesting just because like, I don't know. Like, I think you, you're you not crazy maybe putting him ahead of Jalen Waddle, right? There's there's some other guys yeah. that are number yeah. two wide receivers going ahead of him. At one point, T. Higgins was right there at the same ADP. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I think uh, it, it slid a little bit. But, you know, I, I don't know, man. Like, either you think – that they can this is another team that could throw for 4500 yards easily yeah, right so yeah. it, chris olave could end up with like a 1400 yard season unless you think mt is going to come out and get another you know 12 to 1400 yard season but that's that, i don't know man yeah. i love olave that's a good point because i i think the same thing like the tiebreaker in my mind yeah i sometimes i'll take waddle sometimes you know sometimes i'll take him but olave is the number one guy on a uh, what what seems to be an above average offense that, like you said, can throw for like forty five hundred yards. Sometimes I end up taking Olave just knowing he's that number one guy. Um, so Chris Godwin, Rashad White, Mike Evans, they're going all between you know in the sixties and seventies. Um, Godwin going about fourteen picks before Evans. It used to be like you know a few months ago we we were seeing Godwin and Evans kind of bunched together there. Um, so, you know, this is a free stack. Like if you want to go Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, run it back with one of these, uh, new Orleans guys and grab Baker Mayfield at the end of the draft. Like, I think that that could be an underrated little stack for you. Um, these guys, you know, Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans are always available. I feel like they drop quite a bit. Uh, it's just the uncertainty of the situation, but look, Chris Godwin, we know what to expect from him. I think he's a little bit of a safer bet. Um, he's going to get more targets. He's going to get more of these short passes. Mike Evans is a home run hitter. And look, uh, the thing to talk about with Mike Evans is 10 straight seasons with 1K yards. Like this dude is, I mean, is this the year that he doesn't hit 1K? I don't know, man. Like, okay, yes, Tom Brady there for a few years really helped. But guess who was throwing to him before that? And the dude still was playing well. McCown, Glennon. Jameis Winston, Fitzpatrick. Now, are all these guys like as good or bad as Baker Mayfield? I don't know. That's a good question. These are pro probably right around the same range. 33 touchdowns from those guys. Um, and uh, no, 33 touchdowns from Tom Brady. He's He's got a total of 81 touchdowns in his career. So 48 touchdowns from these other guys. My, my point in saying all this is just because they don't have a great offense, this isn't like the first time they've hit, they haven't had a very good offense. Uh, I still think Mike Evans can do well. Um, and you always got to worry about Chris Godwin's injury history. So thoughts on that. And then let's talk about Rashad White because I'm kind of avoiding Rashad White a little bit. So talk to me. Yeah, man, I, I love Mike Evans. Um, it's interesting that he's the the difference between him uh, and Chris Godwin. Like, honestly, I think they should both be going about the same ADP. Uh, they're both elite. Like, you, you can pretty much expect a thousand yards and six to ten touchdowns, right, from from either guy. So, I don't think you're doing terrible going with either person. Um, but uh, Mike Evans, yeah, you're right, man. Like, I think. Uh, I think people are underestimating what we've seen with him. Like he, he's going to end up, this is one of the greatest wide receivers we've ever seen. And he's done it quietly, right? Like he came in the league with what Manziel, like that was the same fucking time. So like, you know, like we've maybe that 
no, that's that's about the same time. Anyway, somebody's gonna have to fact check me on that. But look, uh, I mean, he's been crushing. And and here's the thing: it, I don't think that he's being a dickwad by uh, uh, saying he's not going to negotiate when the season starts. I think that he just doesn't want to distract the team. Like he's one of those guys who keeps his head down and does what he needs to. So even if he struggles here, like I think it's worth. It's worth having exposure to both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans because there's a realistic chance that one or two of these guys could be shipped out. If it's only Mike Evans, then Chris Godwin's immediately a benefactor of that, right? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Um, look, man, I, I think uh, I think that these are fine guys. I don't think Baker Mayfield's worse than Mike Lennon and uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, 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 Josh McCown. McCown. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Jameis is a, is, is a fantasy quarterback, which is funny because, like, even on the other side, if Derek Carr goes down at any point next season, you're still fine having exposure to that offense. He's going to throw yeah. for fucking 350, four touchdowns. 72 six interceptions, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Carolina doesn't play in a dome. So, yes, they, I, I, they, they oh, will, yeah, you're right. They you're will right. have a ton of dome games, but just trying to fact-check ourselves here. Um, all right, so moving on here. Um, Kamara, it's interesting with Kamara because we didn't, we knew he was going to get suspended most likely, but how many games? And the funny thing with him is people were kind of holding off from him all summer until we found out. Once we found out it was only three games, his ADP went up. Um, the one thing that concerns me about Kamara now, I, maybe I'm just bitter from last year because I absolutely went ham on him because, uh, in best ball, because there was rumors that maybe he could get suspended last year. So he was dropping an ADP and I piled up on him. And it feels like this team just hates Kamara. Like, they did not utilize him last year at all the way they should have. Is, does that happen again this year, especially considering they got Kendry Miller, they got Jamal Williams, like, and they're going to spend the first three games sort of playing without him? I don't know, man. I just don't know if Kamara, even at that ADP, I don't know if I love him this year. Maybe I'm just snake bitten. So talk to me about Kamara. Talk to me what you think Jamal Williams' role is going to be. Is he just going to be one of these nine touchdown dudes with one yard runs again? Um, or is he going to get more involved on first, second, and third down in the middle of the field? Um, and, and then also Kendry Miller, what do you think he's going to be doing? What, what's the situation here with the running backs? Uh, I think the first thing is, is just got to call back to my point about um, Chris Olave. We know who he is now. I think a lot of what happened with Kamara last year had to do with what they were seeing with Chris Olave, right? Like he was he was breaking out on uh, the Saints offense. Like he had an incredible year, man. So now that you know that you have your true one again, like you're not re trying to replace Michael Thomas. You're just happy that he's coming back. Like I think that this offensive scheme is going to adjust more to the kind of the tools that it has around it. Um, Alvin Kamara is going to be able to have a little bit more flexibility because your backfield has that uh, Jamal Williams and uh, uh, Kendra Miller uh, 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 duo as well. So like we saw the most success when it was Mark Ingram back there too. You had somebody, you know, fucking thunder and lightning. God yeah. damn, that was terrible to say, yeah. but you have thunder and lightning back there, right? So you can line Kamara out in the slot. You can do all this other stuff and it makes it really hard to cover him when he's doing stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I like, I, I think you might just be a little snake, snake bitten after last year. I think, um, especially where he's going at, right? Like he's still your like RB two, maybe, right? Like RB three, if you're you're feeling real safe, like so you're not risking too much. You're losing out on those three games, and you know you're capitalizing on a, a little bit of a slide where he may again. This team may be fighting for a division, uh, uh, you know, championship at this point. So this could be the week in week 17 where he's got 120 yards, 10 receptions, and two touchdowns. I like him a lot, man. So before I forget, I want to talk about uh, Juwan Johnson, uh, Taysom Hill. So Juwan Johnson has made a huge jump. There was some rumors that, you know, he's going to absolutely go off this year. He's going to be targeted a ton. And he had a decent year last year. He had quite a few touchdowns. Uh, you know, Juwan Johnson is a guy that, you know, around that around that uh, 148 range, we've seen him move up quite a bit. I haven't been getting to, getting to a ton of him. Um, back when he was, him and Taysom Hill were literally right next to each other. I don't remember exactly what that was, but maybe it was in the 170s probably. Um, I was getting to more of him. Now you're seeing Taysom Hill with, with an injury drop like 20 spots. Uh, am I missing something? Like this injury was never bad enough where we thought he was going to miss half the season or even be on pup or anything like that. Why is it just because we're saying we're seeing Jawan Johnson, his stock rising? Maybe the, the outcome of that is Taysom Hill goes down, but 
I don't think that these guys are correlated at all. <laughs> like, like you know, Juwan Johnson and Taysom Hill, they don't affect each other much. I know they play the same position, but thoughts on this whole Taysom Hill thing because he he's going around pick not 190. I'm always grabbing him there. Yeah, man, I, I had actually cut back on Taysom Hill just because I was getting a little too much of him. Um, I really don't like to be overexposed to these guys and kind of the back ends of the, the, the picks. I don't mind being exposed to guys uh it all look like around 100 uh and that might just be me coping with my exposure to qj and jordan addison but anyways back on track here look i, I taste him hill yeah I, I think he's an he's another guy that kind of opened up this uh punt tight end option right and um i balanced out a little bit here i have Taysom hill and i have a decent amount of Jawan johnson too uh, I think both guys are fine. John Johnson is going to be the more uh, typical tight end. Um, he's a physical guy too, though. So like he's going to, he's going to be a guy that gets a field, catches balls on the sideline. He's going to be a wide receiver tight end hybrid, but in Taysom Hill, we know is a fucking dickwad. He's going to, you know, vulture a uh, three touchdown game with, <laughs> you know, two interceptions on defense and then a punt return <laughs> touchdown, right? That's what he does on the team. So like getting him for free, right. You're not really, I like I don't know if you necessarily want him to be your tight end one, but even then I don't I don't really hate it because again, like he can he's gonna get involved at some point in the offense. I just don't like that it's a lot it's gadget plays. So you minimize kind of what you're doing with him by by having him in gadget plays. And I think that's why you maybe look a little bit more towards Jawan Johnson. Um, but again, the, the slide is just a little bit deeper than it needs to be. Uh earlier it was like 170 and you know. I mean, he, 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 uh, Taysom Hill was actually going before uh, Juwan Johnson yeah. at one point, right? Yeah, like, he was. Yep. Yeah. So it was really easy to get to a little bit more Juwan Johnson at that point. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, like now that it's kind of flipped, like, I, again, I don't, I just don't hate Taysom Hill. I, he, he can get there in a variety of ways. And sometimes, like, the tight end position is just so, it's fickle, man. Like, you can have a shit, shit happen and then... Yeah, you know, one guy has two touchdowns, and that that is the lineup that you had to have that week. Yeah, and I think another thing affecting Taysom is Jimmy Graham. I mean, I, I'm not taking any Jimmy Graham. Maybe like as a 20th round at the if I'm at the very last pick or something. Uh, maybe just for fun <laughs> as a screenshot. Um, but I think that also kind of hurts Taysom's stock there. Um, so uh, let's let's just briefly talk. Did you did you talk about Rashad White? I know I'd asked you about it, but did you get into Rashad White? What's your exposure to him and thoughts on like why isn't um, why why isn't Chase Edmonds like getting any love at all? Why isn't Keyshawn Vaughn getting any love at all? We see we see you know number two running backs getting a lot more love, especially these dudes are pass catching running backs. So I don't know, man. Thoughts on Rashad White? I I almost am completely fading him. I don't know if it's intentional, but I just don't love the idea of a team that could potentially get three or four wins getting a shitload of, uh, of the starting running back. I don't know. That's just me. Thoughts on the situation, and we'll kind of move on. Yeah, I kind of had the same idea, um, but uh, I realized I was getting overexposed to James Conner. Um, and I was like, damn, I can't be biased here. Like, it's literally the same situation, except they might be a little bit better, right? So they might have more opportunities to reasonably run the football. So um, I, I'm not overexposed to Rashad White. I'm not heavy on getting running backs in that range anyways. Uh, like I said, Connor's probably the one I got the most. I think around 12%. And White, I'm closer to maybe, uh, you know, 7% or under. Uh, but uh, outside of those guys, there was one guy that I really wanted to talk about. Um Where's uh where's wide receiver for Tampa Bay? There's some dude named Trey. Yeah. Trey Palmer. Trey Palmer, yep. Yeah, so Trey Palmer is actually going to be the number 3 wide receiver there. He did end up making the team. And um Feel the good. one thing to really keep in mind is if uh like especially if uh, Mike Evans ends up getting traded, he's all of a sudden wide receiver too. He is free. Nobody is taking him. He's a 228 overall, right? And we know that uh, he'd be moving uh, pretty quickly on ADP if he was getting drafted at all. So, like, he's a guy you can take as your wide receiver nine, literally feels zero risk whatsoever, but he has immense upside now. So let's talk about these um, Saints pass catchers, wide receivers. So obviously Chris Olave is a big guy. He's going to soak up a lot of that those targets. Michael Thomas, if he's healthy, will also get some some good amount of opportunity. Besides that, though, you've got two dudes who are probably going to eat up a lot of that usage, but we don't know about Michael Thomas's 
you know, we don't know how much he's going to play. Um, and, and besides him, you got Rashid Shahid, who has shown some upside in the past. Um, but besides that, dude, you don't really have a ton of depth. You got Traquan Smith, who's injured. Um, you've got Keith Kirkwood and A.T. Perry. You've got um, J- John Trey Kirkland on the practice squad. You got a lot of Kirk, a lot of Kirks going on here. Um, but besides that, man, like, uh, are you interested in any of these A.T. Perry dudes, Keith Kirkwoods? Shahid, to me, is a pretty safe bet for a guy that could have a couple big games this year. Yeah, man, um, I think Rashid uh, Shahid is probably the guy that I'm looking at the most. Um, and it's interesting because his ADP slipped a little bit because of his what he had a Q, Q tag on him for a little bit there. Right. Um, and he yeah. could easily end up being one of the steals of the draft. Right. So I, I, what, my little rant about Trey Palmer, like Michael Thomas, we he hasn't played for real in like three years. Yeah. And I know everything's looking great, this and that. But like you said, I'll see it when I believe it. If there is any issue, um, Rashid Shahid is what their number two. And even then, uh, if if MT's back, then Shahid just gets to do whatever the hell he wants. Nobody's going to be guarding him. So yeah. I, again, I just think that he's in a good spot yeah, either way. Uh, however, this shakes out. Um, I haven't gotten any uh, Keith Kirkwood or A.T. Perry. Uh, I know there's uh, reasons that you can go with some of these guys. But again, like I just I think there's higher upside options available in this range. Yeah. And I probably already tried for Rashid Shahid or something. Yeah. Like, I'm not waiting to get my New Orleans exposure on the back end like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. All right. So this is a lineup you did. When did you do this? This seems like it's pretty old because you got a lot of red there um, as far as ADP. So it seems like like this is a way earlier in the summer lineup, right? Yeah, I think this one was uh, like uh, early June. Um, luckily, that one's got Kylan Granson. That seemed to be a this might be my only Kylan Granson lineup, too. That's funny. Yeah, you're getting Kareem Hunt at, in the very last round. You got Elijah Moore early. Save flowers way late, which is nice. Um, what do you got here? You got a Tampa Bay 1-1. One, one. Let's see. Who, who do you got? Oh, yeah, you got Chris Godwin, Baker Mayfield. Yes. See, I have a couple I have a couple of these. Like, like the, the Tampa Bay stacks should be like your third stack. Like, that's, that's kind of like how I'm treating it right. as a compliment. Maybe you get a huge Week 17 out of one of these guys. It's like a lower-owned sort of thing in the, in the Week 17. What else jumps out to you here, man? I like this. This is, I don't even know if, like, if you look at the overall closing line value for your ADP on the right hand side there, it's all kind of evened out. <laughs> even though you reached on guys like Josh Down and Garoppolo and Michael Mayer, it all kind of evened out with, with some of these other value picks you, you've gotten. Yeah, man. Like, I, it, again, I'm not too, uh, I, I don't hate this lineup. I mean, look, look at where I got Calvin Ridley at one point. He was going 38 and he was, yeah, I mean, he's getting to 24, right? So some of, some of this stuff ended up balancing out, but I chose this lineup specifically because I want to show like, this is how I got most of my Tampa Bay, uh, uh, exposure, New Orleans exposure. It was so easy to stack on the back end. If you end up in that weird range where you're looking at Chris Godwin or Mike Evans, like it's so easy to take them. You just grab Baker Mayfield. He was probably going to start. Like, let's be realistic. Like, he was a former number one overall pick. He was probably yeah. going to start. Um, so, like, outside of Colt McCoy, like he's my highest owned quarterback, <laughs> which is some fucking craziness, right? Oh, like, man. I doubled down on some dumbass shit there. But like, <laughs> this one lineup might be a little uh, odd um, with Irv Smith again. I think. Uh, him sliding down a little bit uh but mayor jimmy g josh downs like i i don't give a shit about any of those guys like this whole range like kind of just flip flop to be honest oh it was if you didn't have warren um big speed those running backs and uh like Nico collins those were the guys that are in the 120s or and earlier now outside of that everybody just flipped all right we're done ellie um last show for best ball um we're gonna finish up a lot of our drafts i got like maybe eight drafts left to get through in four days for the big contest the millie maker and then of course i'm gonna just gonna try to finish all these 20 maxes that they keep putting out or any of these qualifiers that they keep putting out uh, besides that man like what are your thoughts overall so far for best ball like are we super excited about this next year like tying up money like thousands of dollars for eight months is not fun but hey like throughout the season man like i i kind of get my dgen uh muscle you know from from being able to watch these best ball drafts and just being able to keep up with them and not having to worry about it right 
Yeah, so a couple things. I mean, the first thing is, is one of the things that uh, frustrated me a little bit was it took us 16 shows and we still couldn't get a fucking intro that sounded somewhat normal. <laughs> like, we're just really great at, like, we can have a conversation. We just can't start it. It's like, hey, <laughs> we're talking now and this is the show. So anyways, uh, I had to say something about that. But as far as uh, the best ball goes, man, I enjoy it, right? Like, uh, it's easy to get frustrated with, uh, you know, in tilt pretty hard on Sundays when your lineup sucks. Yeah. But when you have best ball going on, it's you have uh something happening for 14 weeks and again you're not playing 25 home leagues and if you are you're <laughs> insane yeah, that's so insane. like if your home league sucks like at least best ball you can have an opportunity to be live somewhere um but yeah. hopefully it works out man i want to i want to win i want somebody else to win and uh we can do a lot more content for it next year yeah with all this data that we're that we we've been logging every one of these drafts um i'm excited to look back at the end of the season and see what some of the things we did right see some of the things we did wrong try to figure out try to like kind of beat this uh, you know it, this is still young best ball still young nobody's really conquered it and i feel like a lot of the the big shark dudes obviously they're not playing on DraftKings. a lot of them but after a while, like maybe next year, they're they're not going to be super as super into this if they don't profit because it takes an hour per draft. That's a that's a lot of, of hours that you're spending for potentially not a huge profit, <laughs> you know. So right. we're gonna kind of see how that ends up. We appreciate you guys. Uh, subscribe, like this video, get ready for main slate uh, preview show coming up maybe tomorrow or maybe two days from now as well as our usual showdown show for Thursday night. We'll be releasing that on Wednesday morning, most likely. We'll see you guys later. We appreciate it.